This week on the Inside Story, it's official. Democrats nominate Vice President Kamala Harris and Minnesota Governor Tim Walz as their candidates for November's presidential election. Join us in Chicago, where we'll take you to the convention floor. Turn out for what? Where Democrats lay out their vision for beating Donald Trump and his vice presidential pick, J.D. Vance. Now, on the Inside Story, USA Votes 2024, the Democratic National Convention. to the Inside Story. I'm Katherine Gibson at the Democratic National Convention in Chicago, Illinois. The convention began Monday night with current President Joe Biden passing the torch and ended Thursday night with the Democratic Party putting Vice President Kamala Harris on the path to becoming the first female president. Here she is in her own words. On behalf of everyone whose story could only be written in the greatest nation on earth. I accept your nomination to be president of the United States of America. And with this election, our nation, our nation with this election has a precious, fleeting opportunity to move past the bitterness, cynicism, and divisive battles of the past, a chance to chart a new way forward. Not, not as members of any one party or faction, but as Americans. I know there are people of various political views watching tonight, and I want you to know I promise to be a president for all Americans. You can always trust me to put country above party and self. I will be a president who unites us around our highest aspirations, a president who leads and listens, who is realistic, practical, and has common sense and always fights for the American people. From the courthouse to the White House, that has been my life's work. And now, our deep dive into the Democratic National Convention. With Vice President Harris and Minnesota Governor Walls now officially atop the ticket, the party has seen a swing in enthusiasm from when President Joe Biden was the nominee. Introduced by his daughter Ashley, President Joe Biden received a hero's welcome. Thank you. Thank you. At the Democratic National Convention in Chicago, Illinois, he fulfilled his promise to be a transitional leader. Are you ready to elect Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz? and gave his full support to Kamala Harris, the party's new presidential nominee for the November election. But she'll be a president our children can look up to. She'll be a president respected by world leaders because she already is. She'll be a president we can all be proud of. And she will be an historic president who puts her stamp on America's future. Biden was unchallenged at the Democratic primaries. Just a month ago, the roughly 4,000 delegates here were set to nominate him. But Monday, he balanced support for Harris and his achievements in office. COVID no longer controls our lives. We've gone from economic crisis to the strongest economy in the entire world. Record 16 million new jobs. Record small business growth. 
Record high stock market, record high 401ks, wages up, and inflation down, way down, and continuing to go down. It started with the debate against Republican nominee former President Trump in late June. Biden, who is 81, had such dismal performance that people questioned his mental acuity. Then, an assassination attempt on Trump that rallied Republicans and pushed him further ahead in the polls. For weeks, Biden insisted he would remain in the race, even as party leaders privately asked him to step aside. Uh, Joe Biden is a one-term president who was forced off the ticket by the leaders of the Democratic Party despite having uh, won the nomination in the primaries. Uh, he's now asked to make an enthusiastic endorsement of his vice president, Kamala Harris. Um, it doesn't take a Sigmund Freud to realize that he might be very conflicted about this. If he's conflicted, then Joe Biden is not showing it at all, expressing strong support for Kamala Harris and basking in the love and gratitude of his party. He spoke to some convention delegates here on the floor. It was a beautiful speech. It was, it was a great speech of a culmination of years and years of service. Well, I think his legacy is strong and positive. And tonight he told the American public why he loves them and what he did for 50 years to serve our nation. And it's an incredible record. This despite Trump trying to sow division among Democrats. They forced him out. It was a coup. We had a coup. That was the first coup in the history of our country. Biden repeated Democrats' theme of Harris, a former prosecutor, going against Trump, who has been found guilty in court. And crime will keep coming down when we put a prosecutor in the Oval Office instead of a convicted felon. Biden ended his speech with an embrace from Harris, cementing his role among Democrats as the leader who could possibly save the country again from Trump, this time by passing the torch. Joe, thank you for your historic leadership, for your lifetime of service to our nation, and for all you will continue to do. We are forever grateful to you. Patsy Widakuswara, VOA News, Chicago. A hometown welcome at the Democratic National Convention for former President Barack Obama. I, America's ready for a new chapter. America's ready for a better story. We are ready for a President Kamala Harris. Obama drew a direct comparison between Harris and her Republican opponent, former President Donald Trump. Kamala Harris won't be focused on her problems. She'll be focused on yours. As president, she won't just cater to her own supporters and punish those who refuse to kiss the ring or bend the knee. She'll work on behalf of every American. That's who Kamala is. Obama was introduced by his wife, Michelle, who said Harris's shortened campaign season should encourage Democrats to work even harder to elect her. We cannot indulge our anxieties about whether this country will elect someone like Kamala instead of doing everything we can to get someone like Kamala elected. Although Democrats already formalized their nomination process earlier this month, a ceremonial roll call of states. Great state of Alabama proudly cast 56 votes for the first black woman president of the United States of America. Showed the enthusiasm of Democrats for their new nominee. All 34 of our votes for our next black woman President Harris. Harris thanked delegates remotely from her rally in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So to everyone in Chicago and across America, thank you. Thank you. Democrats also heard from Harris's husband, who called his wife a joyful warrior. She'll lead from the belief that wherever we come from, whatever we look like, we're strongest when we fight for what we believe in, not just against what we fear. The second night of the convention also featured former members of the Trump administration and Republican officials who have endorsed Harris. 
Trump made a lot of lofty promises. Unlimited economic growth, American manufacturing reborn, a secure border. Turns out Donald Trump was all talk. Opening the third day of Democrats' national convention in Chicago, U.S. Senator Cory Booker from New Jersey outlined the night's theme. Right, Welcome to night three. And tonight is about freedom. While some of the programming provided speakers opportunities to address topics including reproductive rights, environmental issues, and border security, much of the messaging focused on what Democrats say is the choice in the November election. Kamala Harris for the people. And the other guy who's proved even more than the first go around that he's about me, myself, and I. Former President Bill Clinton was one of the most anticipated speakers of the evening. Clinton, who has attended every convention for Democrats since 1972, drew from his own experience in the White House to explain why he believes Vice President Kamala Harris is the best choice for president. Kamala Harris will work to solve our problems, seize our opportunities, ease our fears, and make sure every single American, however they vote, has a chance to chase their dreams. But the key moment for Democrats was hearing from Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, who accepted his party's nomination as vice president. It's the honor of my life to accept your nomination for Vice President of the United States. For many in the crowd, and those watching the convention around the country, Waltz's speech was a sort of introduction. Now, I grew up in Butte, Nebraska, a town of 400 people. I had 24 kids in my high school class, and none of them went to Yale. But I'll tell you what, growing up in a small town like that, you learn how to take care of each other. Waltz, a military veteran, former teacher, and American high school football and basketball coach, highlighted how these parts of his personal biography prepared him for a life in politics. But it was those players and my students who inspired me to run for Congress. They saw in me what I had hoped to instill in them, a commitment to the common good an understanding that we're all in this together. And the belief that a single person can make a real difference for their neighbors. As the final speaker, Walls punctuated the freedom theme of the night. But when we Democrats talk about freedom, we mean the freedom to make a better life for yourself and the people that you love. Freedom to make your own health care decisions. And yeah, your kids' freedom to go to school without worrying about being shot dead in the hall. It's the economy, stupid. That's the famous saying coined by Democratic political strategist James Carville for Bill Clinton's campaign workers. Now, Bill Clinton went on to beat incumbent President George H.W. Bush for the White House in 1992. But even today, the economy remains the political elephant in the room for any campaign. Harris and Trump both recently laid out their visions for the economy, promising to rein in inflation and slash federal taxes on tipped income. Both ideas are very popular with voters, but experts say they're not so easy to implement. If there's one issue that unites American voters, both Democrats and Republicans, it's this. I just see the prices keep increasing by 25 cents and 50 cents, and uh, nothing's really um, easy anymore um, on your pocket. Ahead of the November election, the two rivals, Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump, are focusing on inflation. When I am elected president, I will make it a top priority to bring down costs 
and increase economic security for all Americans. Does anyone here feel richer under Kamala Harris than Crooked Joe than you were during the Trump administration? Is anything less expensive under Kamala Harris and Crooked Joe? Calling for a federal ban on corporate price gouging, Harris specifically called out the meat processing industry, while Trump said he would fight rising prices by boosting oil and gas production. It is highly unlikely that any single policy uh, introduced by a president could have a, a significant uh, enough impact to bring inflation down from its current level to the Federal Reserve's long-term target for the economy, which is 2%. Last month, the U.S. year-over-year -year inflation dipped under 3 percent for the first time since March 2021, although Americans are still feeling the pain. Retail sales figures are upbeat, unemployment is low, and most economists no longer warn of recession. Still, the overall health of the economy remains a key concern for voters and a point of attack on the campaign trail. We're not going to let this incompetent socialist lunatic keep breaking our economy for four more years. It'll destroy our country. Compare my plan with what Donald Trump intends to do. He plans to give billionaires massive tax cuts year after year. And he plans to cut corporate taxes by over a trillion dollars. Both candidates have also promised to slash federal taxes on tips received by workers in the service and hospitality industry. Critics say that proposal won't help fast food servers or other low-income workers who don't get tips, and that it's costly and vulnerable to abuse. How can we be sure that it's deserving working people as opposed to opening the door to a whole bunch of other people who might uh, treat their bonuses and performance fees like tips and exempt themselves. Trump previously led President Joe Biden in voter polls on economic issues. Now at least one poll shows voters trust the candidates almost equally, with 42% supporting Harris and 41% Trump. Patsy Widak was what viewing news, Washington. Some states are red or blue, Democrat or Republican. But there are other ones known as swing states that could go to either party. These are the battlegrounds where elections are lost or won. VOA's Midwestern correspondent Kane Faribaugh spoke to swing voters in the state of Wisconsin to see how they're thinking about this election. When VOA met Wisconsin restaurant owner Gonzalo Perez in 2017, he expected a big boost in business. It's my lottery ticket. That's because Taiwanese company Foxconn planned to build a massive flat-screen manufacturing facility not far away. Employing as many as 13,000 workers, Perez thought might frequent his restaurant. But Perez's dreams and Foxconn's plans didn't meet reality. Today, Foxconn's scaled-back southern Wisconsin facility employs fewer than 1,000 people. The promise never was done. Instead of a busy restaurant filled with customers, Perez is dealing with empty tables, staff shortages, and rising costs due to inflation. The economy is really bad for us. I think that the real key when people go to vote uh, in many cases is how do I deal with rising costs? Bob Whitkey is a Republican representative in Wisconsin's State Assembly, whose current district is near both Perez's restaurant and the Foxconn facility. While the economy is a top issue for voters, he hears even more frustration with what they see as a lack of bipartisan cooperation among lawmakers. That we don't work together. I hear from both parties. You're not getting anything done. Nick Ramos is the executive director of the Wisconsin Democracy Campaign, which he says is a bipartisan organization dedicated to good government in Wisconsin. The organization recently participated in a successful effort to change state legislative district maps in Wisconsin. Voters he talks to express concern about the future of U.S. democracy. My hope is, is that no matter who ends up taking the Oval Office, it will be somebody that actually engages the people and actually wants to try and do everything to not only safeguard democracy, but find ways to make it better. Wisconsin is a state as divided as any in the country, but what both Democrats and Republicans here can agree on is that succeeding in the presidential election in this state in November depends on how well they can get their voters to turn out. So Wisconsin, today I ask you, are you ready to get to work? Yeah.
Recent polling in Wisconsin indicates Democratic nominee Vice President Kamala Harris has a narrow lead over Republican nominee, former President Donald Trump. A vote for Trump is a vote to save Wisconsin and is a vote to save your country. Restaurant owner Gonzalo Perez hasn't attended political events and hasn't met either candidate. Lifestyle never change. It don't matter who gets in. I got to keep working seven days a week, same schedule. I pay taxes regular. I don't see no, no benefit. Perez says one thing above all will determine how he'll make his decision. Sometimes I vote for whoever I think is going to be a change. Kane Fairbaugh, VOA News, Madison, Wisconsin. Northampton County, Pennsylvania has often found itself at the core of the United States Industrial Revolutions and its political evolutions. Its city of Easton was one of the three places where the Declaration of Independence was first read to the public. Bethlehem, once synonymous with industrial might, is now a tourist destination with such events as Music Fest, which drew more than one million attendees this year. It's a much more uplifting tune for the city and its voters following the blues of two decades ago, when former industrial titan Bethlehem Steel was dissolved and sold. China's in the steel business now, and they want to know what are these candidates going to do to bring those jobs back or to, to rebuild America. Northampton County has the uncanny ability to select the winners of presidential elections, having chosen all but three since 1920. What really makes it, I think, magical in its ability to predict what happens in the state and nationally is its mix. In that mix, farmers, suburbanites, new residents from New York and Philadelphia, and a growing Hispanic population. The hardcore Republicans and the hardcore Democrats, they are so even in their numbers that the Democrats have a little bit of an edge there, that that small percentage of people who are willing to swing uh, are going to decide that election time and time and time again. And that is why this is known as Swing County, USA, where there's still a significant percentage of voters who split their ballots between parties and prioritize issues over personalities. Being the president is a job, and so we care more about, you know, is the job going to get done? That's Rachel Lowe, a new mother concerned about women's rights and environmental policies. Mick O'Hearn sees the majority of the county supporting the Democrats for a second consecutive presidential election. From talking to people who I know voted for Trump in the last election, they're not going to vote for him this time around because they're saying that they're kind of tired of it. Democratic Party nominee Kamala Harris is not going to get Wayne Jones's vote because he says Former President Donald Trump is tougher on stopping illegal migration. If I had to choose right now, Trump hands down. I mean, letting all these people cross the border. The county's voters take seriously their pivotal role in picking presidents, but that blessing can be a curse, according to Professor Boric. I live in Northampton County. The, the mailing I get every day or when I turn on the TV, the, the amount of ads is omnipresent. It's beautiful to be wanted, uh, but sometimes the, uh, the attention can be overwhelming. With Northampton County on a red-hot streak as the nation's political bellwether, the Trump and Harris campaigns will keep hammering away here until Election Day. Steve Herman, VOA News, Northampton County, Pennsylvania. Before we leave you this week, we wanted to take a moment to remember John Lansing. Lansing served as the chief executive of the U.S. Agency for Global Media, of which VOA is a part. Current CEO Amanda Bennett called Lansing a relentless advocate for press freedom, journalist safety, and connecting people around the world in support of freedom and democracy. Lansing died last week at his lakeside home in Wisconsin. He was 67. I'm Katherine Gibson. See you next week for the Inside Story.